Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And for all of you that are new, my name is Lori Green and I'm your art instructor. Today it is all about how art supplies work. And I bet you didn't know that no matter what art supply that you're using, they're basically all made with the same ingredients. And we're going to talk about that and how to change these ingredients to get different effects. This video is filled with hacks, facts, tips, and tricks. You're going to want to write some of these down. recognize this? I bet a lot of people do. It is a Prismacolor blender marker. I will bet you that the tip of the blender marker looks like this. Did you also know that this blender marker cost almost $8 on Amazon? That's crazy. Instead of a blender marker, go out and get a blank. Copic sells them. Arteza sells them. Do you know what's inside of a blender marker? Isopropyl alcohol. Take your blank. One side is refillable pop it out. This one happens to be dry. Isopropyl alcohol, $3 at Walmart. Refill it, pop your nib back in. It's that easy. Cheaper than that, go get yourself some pointed Q-tips. Amazon, $8 for 800 of these. Yes, 800. The pointed tips feel like nubs, dip in some alcohol, and blend to your heart's content. Same as your blending marker. Every time you use it, you get a clean nib. Did you know that these are refillable? Pop the top, remove your nib, get one of these squeezy bottles, insert into the top, squeeze, add your nib back in, wait a few minutes for it to settle down, if you need to clean your nib, just soak it in a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Keep running it until it's clear, and there you have it. It's stained, but it's clean. What is in art media or your art supplies? All art supplies, no matter what they are from paint to pencils, include three things. One is a, a pigment. A pigment is chemicals, and they're usually earthen chemicals, cadmium, magnesium, titanium. Those make up the colors from the earth. That's how you get a pigment, and pigments are dry. They're in powder form. Micas are pigments, but not all pigments are mica. In addition to that, pigments can be made from clay, which are usually very uh, matte-based, and it needs additives. So we'll talk about additives a little bit later, but right now we're dealing with a pigment, and then you're going to add a binder. Now, what is a binder? It's glue. If you put pigment on a, a canvas or a piece of paper, it's not going to stick. It's going to fall off. The powder, it may hold up for a few minutes, a week, but eventually it's going to rub off. It's not going to hold onto the paper. That's where a binder comes in. Now, a binder could be made from rubber, latex, acrylic, resin. You can have wax, oil, and those are your binders. Everything from paint to pencils have a binder, even watercolor pencils. Watercolor pencils are not pigment in a baked into a core. It's pigment and a binder. When you mix your pigment and your binder together, it's not going to flow. It's going to just form a glop and it's going to just stay there. It's very hard to create art with just a pigment and a binder. You need something else. That something else is a solvent. In the art world, they use oil. They'll use alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. And they use some sort of petroleum. Now, what is the universal solvent? Water. Water happens to be a very powerful solvent. They use acetone, which is the same acetone that you use to take your nail polish off with. Acetone happens to be water-soluble. So you need all three of those. And when you combine your binder and your solvent together, it's called the vehicle. So it's your pigment and your vehicle. And you get an art supply whether it be paint or a colored pencil or pastels or anything in between, gouache. If you break down chemistry of that art supply, you can break it down because everything that has the binder breaks down, you can change it. Today, we're going to change the properties in these art medias and change it so that it does something else. And it's going to be a lot of fun. This is 
Dowler and Rooney and I have used it in so many videos and every video I get what is that what is that is it Gamsol is it the same as Gamsol and to be honest when I looked up this stuff all it says is it's an alternative to Gamsol which is a mineral spirit so I had to do a lot of digging and into some chemistry and to find out what Dowler and Rooney is because the only thing it says is low odor thinner. And I finally have the answer to what this is. You gotta tell them Silent Green is people! <laughs> it's nail polish remover. I always wondered why my nails were trashed after I used this if I wasn't careful. Uh, this is acetone. I would recommend just buying some cheap acetone instead of this. This is extremely low odor. There's almost no odor. My nail polish remover has a way stronger scent. So if you have a choice, this is very inexpensive. I get this at Walmart and it's only a couple of dollars. Just for those of you who like to know what they're using, acetone is a ketone. It's broken down in the liver. So if you have diabetes, too much of the Dowlin Rooney getting into your system can cause ketoacidosis. Uh, you don't use it with your hands to begin with. If you are using nail polish remover, uh, take the same precautions, well-ventilated room, and do not ingest internally. <laughs> A few videos back, we made liquid pencil. And we did that by breaking down the cores of both oil and wax pencils in a solvent. And I used Downer and Rooney, which we now know is acetone. I also added a little bit of alcohol and today, and it worked out great. Today we're going to take other mediums and we're going to break them down. Now I spent the week experimenting with everything. Everything that I'm using now is safe. There is nothing going to explode. Most of the things that I'm going to create are better for your coloring books than actually using any sort of water in your coloring book. They add tooth and you'll see what a benefit you're going to have. Plus the colors and effects are amazing. So we're going to look at four different solvents. They're common solvents in the art world, and that's water, mineral spirits, isopropyl alcohol, and acetone. And those are going to be the primary four solvents that we're going to be used with these different mediums. I'm not going to do all of them that I experimented with today because I have tutorials coming up in the near future and I will create the medium as I do the tutorial. Today's video was more of an overview on what I am doing in general and we're going to get specific with every type of medium. Let's go back to the liquid pencil. I have some improvements that I figured out this week and now I know the reasons why it does what it does. In my liquid pencil video, I promised you an update because of all the mediums, the liquid pencil takes the longest. Everything else I did, I got immediate results with. The pencil, you have to let the binder really break down. So the top two are two of them that I created. I This one I created during the video itself. And these two are... Um, ones that I created during the week. I used a Prismacolor pencil for this top one and the mediums will dry a bit and that's not a problem. Just like watercolor you can reconstitute, just add a little bit more solvent and it springs right back to life. And what's amazing about this, now this is a little bit dry now, I have to add a little bit more. This is pencil. Now, this will dry almost immediately. It's really quick drying. It doesn't add water onto your page. And when you're done, you can color right over it. So this is a nicer bottom than, say, marker. Because you can actually blend it all up. And it works really nice. And for those of you who like to keep your coloring and your artwork pure, it's liquid pencil. So for the top one, I used a wax pencil, which was Prismacolor. Now, all pencils have a little bit of mixture in the binders. 
They've got a wax and they have oil binders. Wax pencils have the most predominant uh, part of it is the binder is a wax binder. Oil pencils are harder and uh, they keep their points better and they're a little bit more translucent than wax pencils. Oil pencils and wax pencils can be blended together. There's no problem. And many people do it. I do it all the time. I don't even think about it and I do it so often. So here is the mixture. Now it dries really super fast. So you have to be quick about it. The third one is pure oil pencil. In fact, I did, I used a Star Joy and these are the cores that I used. They are from uh, the samples that I was sent by Andy, the owner of Star Joy pencils. So I used those and I mixed up the green. Now what I discovered, and I have it working, it's not completely done. Oil pencils do not break down completely in an acetone. So, uh, wax pencils break down in both acetone and alcohol. So you can use a little bit of both on these. With the oil pencils, now if you're breaking down some of your cheaper pencils, they're oil pencils, a lot of them come out of China, and you just don't want to use them because you can't get that rich color that you, um, you desire. So you want to break it down. You will get a little grit at the bottom. Now, to break this down fully, look how rich the color. What breaks down an oil pencil? Now write this down, mineral spirits. So this is where you can use your Gamsol or your generic mineral spirit. It's going to dry in about 45 minutes to an hour and it blends beautifully. So that's your update on your liquid pencils. Um, they're a lot of fun and you can get these little jars on Amazon. I'm gonna leave all the links to the materials in the description box below. I'm also gonna leave links to the other videos so that you can get more of a feel of exactly what I was doing. You can also add mica to this. And mica, you know, as I said earlier, was a pigment and it adds a shine. This will also alter the color a little bit. And you can see the difference between the two of them. Another thing, now that my fingers are really shiny, another thing that I was able to add to them, and you're going to be able to add this a lot, is add a poppy red. Alcohol inks. In person, and as this dries, you're going to be able to see that shine come through and the glisten and the sparkle. Now I'm going to add a little bit of alcohol. Look what that does. Again, you're going to change the color. And there you have a much more red pink. This one blew me away. I've got two brand new products here. One is called Metallic Luster and it's by DecoArt. The other one is um, Metallic Wax. This is Peacock and it's by Art Alchemy. I got both of these on Amazon this week. They're pretty much similar to the Rub and Buff that I demonstrated, except they don't, they don't spread as far as Rub and Buff. Rub and Buff, dab of Rub and Buff, and you can do an entire project. I didn't get it to spread that far, um, but these products are just about the same. They're waxes. Now, what breaks down wax? Well, alcohol breaks down wax. Acetone breaks down wax. So you can either use one or the other. I, normally, you would not break this down. This is a craft product, and you would use this on wood, metal, uh, a statue, a basket. That's what you would use this on. So a little dab will do you in the bottom. I use about a quarter of an inch. This tube will last a long time. This is way more than you will probably ever need. 
I didn't think they came. I thought they came in this size, and this is what I got. So it's a lot. This comes in many different colors. You could have it in red, blue. I saw a salmon. I even ordered the white. This happens to be the lavish green. It's the yellow green or the leafy green. And you use just a little bit, and that will make up a whole tub. Look how long this is going to last you. So I'm going to add that to the tub. And then I'm going to put a little bit of solvent because I want to dissolve that uh, binder. Now, if you want it a little bit more opaque, you just add a little bit more paste. Now, watch what happens when I break this down. Takes a few minutes. You want to try to get all the lumps out, or most of them, because that's where all the pigment is. This is why I said you don't need much. <laughs> this was probably a lot more than I really needed. I probably have used half the amount of pigment. So that can use a little bit more mixing, but it's fine the way it is. Now this goes on with a brush. I'm using a Q-tip, which is probably not something I would choose to use on my artwork just because it's a little harder to control than a brush. And it absorbs the solvent. Isn't that not beautiful? It's got hues of both green and blue in it. After I let it dry for a few minutes, it's really starting to shine. Now you could really see it. Very opaque. Teeny tiny bit. I think I paid eight or nine dollars for it. You can then come back because it's a wax. Oh, it's already dry. And look at the way it colors over. Use this in one of your coloring books, in one of your cheap paper coloring books, and it's you are going to light them up. You're not even going to know you're using cheap paper. Now let's take a look at the other one from the other brand, the Deco Art. This is the one that breaks down in alcohol. This one breaks down in acetone. The Deco Art will not break down in acetone. But look at this, how gorgeous it is in alcohol. Now remember that this is, it takes a few minutes, so I still have a lot of lumps in it. You can actually see the, the iridescence on it, on the top. Now this is a lighter one, but when I lift it up, you will see that shine. So imagine putting that over a leaf. And you'll see it in just a second. Can you see the gold? It's starting to come up. Wanna... You got to get the light right when you're working with things that shine. Now imagine doing your picture and having translucent gold going off the top. And as soon as the paper completely dries, it's not completely dried yet. The edges are starting to get very shiny. You can start seeing it. It's coming up as we're doing this. You can add a little bit of mica in there. Okay, so I have a little bit of yellow mica. So this is coming up perfect. Very translucent. You see it's, oh, there it goes. I think I got the light this time. So pretty. Put that right over your colored pencil. Now I want to change this up a little bit. I want to give it some more pizzazz. Add a little bit of mica powder into it. Could you imagine a full spectrum in that? 
So now I turned it another color, adding that pigment to the solvent. So that's two ways of using it with and without the mica. These come in the yellow, blue, and red. That's all you need to create any color. Of I'm running out of time in this video. I just wanted to show you this one. I used uh, colored pencil, mica, and mineral spirits. And look how beautiful. You can see the mica powder floating on the top. So beautiful. No. But imagine that over colored pencil. And it dries really fast. If you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel. And I will see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.